OK, so how did you go? Here are the solutions to the exercises from Chapter 9. OK, so here's my solution to the first of those two questions about the usage message. And this script is actually called usage message and it is available, of course, on the CD in the Chapter 9 folder. So here's the little function itself. Now the very first thing I do, and this is the only clever part of the, of the whole script, is I take $1, which is supposed to represent the script name, and I store it in a little variable called script, and then I shift. I skip over that, so now, after I've shifted, $star, asterisk, represents all the other parameters, however many there happen to be. There may be none, or there may be 20, it doesn't really matter. The point is, now I can use $star, to represent all the other parameters. Now why have I done that? Well the reason I've done that is essentially so that I can just do a base name on the first parameter whilst leaving all the other parameters alone and that's exactly what I've done. So then you can see I've echoed the output to standard error I put in a little control G which is not just a caret followed by a capital G you've actually got to type control G on the VI keyboard as you're editing the script if you want the control G character to be put in at that particular point. And after that it's pretty much satisfactory, straightforward, just exit with the exit status of 2. So let's see if that works now. We'll just pass that three parameters. This is the example that I showed you before in, in the uh, place where I actually specified the question. Let's run this and percent and the usage message is well, usage underscore msg, file name, username, dot dot dot. And I actually heard a little uh, bing there, a little bell, which you probably didn't hear, but I did hear it. And just to test that the base name is working, let's try that again. Let's say dot slash percent. So that'll be dot slash usage message, and hopefully the, the base name part will strip out the dot slash, and it should still work and it did. There's no dot slash in that usage message. Okay, so it's fairly straightforward. The trickiest part was that little shift to separate out the script name from the rest of the parameters. Let's now have a look at the course project. So let's have a look at the changes here. Um, the first change is the actual addition of the usage message and there it is, fully commented. So that's uh, simple enough. And now I'll scroll down a bit and find the actual start of the main code, which is here. Now, here is where we do the test of the command line parameters. Did we get exactly one parameter? Does dollar hash equal one? Now, if that is false, then it will run usage dollar zero file name. So the very first thing I'm going to do is actually test that. I'll run it as follows, and this time I'll specify no parameters on the command line just to see if that works. And Yep, there we go, there's the usage message, just as you would hope. And I would also hopefully get that usage message if I specified two parameters on the command line. And again, I do. So, if we got to the next line, then we actually must have supplied a file name on the command line. So, let's store that away. I'm going to store that in the variable called fname. And I will really not need to refer to $1 anymore for the rest of the script. So let's see if it actually exists. I'll use the minus F to check whether A, it exists, and B, it's a regular file. So first, if it does not exist, we'll echo out a message to that effect, and then we'll ask them if they can create it, and we'll handily use that yes-no function that we used earlier. And if they say yes, then we'll create it. And we also need to check that that succeeded. So now the file should exist, and it should be writable. And if it's not, then we need to put out a message to that effect saying we couldn't create the file and exit the program, and otherwise we're OK. But there's still a couple of other cases to check, like they might have said, no, they don't want to create it, so we'll go in here and we'll just exit. It's not an error, it's just they've chosen not to proceed. And this else, or this elif, if you like, that was connected to this original if statement here, where we checked whether the file existed or not and we went into this first case if it didn't exist so now if we get down to here then it the file did exist 
now we can check that it's writable and if it's not writable then we put out a message to that effect and exit and of course if it is writable then we can just proceed onwards and we get down to the rest of it which is right here so let's test that I will run it and I will specify a file name I'll just call it test.dat now I didn't really test it obviously I'll try that again specify percent which is the current script test.dat okay here we go test.dat does not exist which is correct create it uh, no okay so let's try it again and this time I'll say create it yes we will create it and here we are ready to go it must have successfully created otherwise I wouldn't have got this far so let's create a record and we'll just specify some rubbish in here and those details are correct create another record no and view the records yes there they are aren't they lovely okay and quit and yes I really do wish to quit and now when I run it it should not tell me that the file doesn't exist because the file does exist and it just goes straight in with the file name that I specified ready to manipulate the database now I did actually specify a file name then I know that I only went um, hang on let's get out of this I know that I only went like that dollar exclamation mark exclamation mark but what that really was doing was question mark test dot dat that's just repeating the last command as you recall and recall of course again that the percent sign is just the name of the current file that Vi is editing which is the script of course okay so that's it it works how did you go did you get a working script then I hope so okay we've only got one chapter left in the whole course and then we're done let's move on